Welcome to Life Mastery for Women, where I help you decode the struggles in your life in the areas of health, wealth, relationships, and spirituality with mind mastery, emotional management, and meditation. Welcome to today's podcast. Hey ladies, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to today's episode where I hope I am finding you asking for help. If you are not asking for help, then it is my intention that in today's episode, I give you just one nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. Now I have a question. (laughs) I have a question. Why is it, or not why, where do women get the idea that asking for help is a sign of weakness? I really want you to think about that for a minute. Is it a sign of weakness for you? And then why? Where did you get that from? Where do we get the notion that we should not ask for help? Where do we get the idea that unless you are absolutely 100% falling apart, you should not ask for help? I, uh, if you listen to my podcast, you know that I was working at, um, like at this, uh, resort cleaning cabins and I just absolutely loved it. And I sort of miss it. Like I miss the actual job of cleaning the cabins because it just, as I just keep saying, I just love the outdoors part of it. And I love the physical movement of it. And I love taking pride in what I do. And I love cleaning. But I worked with this woman who somewhere after Christmas or before Christmas or somewhere, she broke her ankle. And she fell down some steps and broke her ankle. And two weeks later, like she was in a cast. And two weeks later, she shows up to work. I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm coming to work. And I'm like, why? And she's like, because I have to. And I said, okay, so let me carry your stuff for you. No, I don't need you to carry my stuff for me. I'm like, what do you mean you don't need me to carry your stuff for me? I'm like, dude, I'm just trying to help. She goes, I don't need your help. Asking for help is a sign of weakness. (laughs) What? Okay, I know that there's a lot of pride that goes into having the ability to do things on your own all the time. I get that. 100% I get that. But what I don't understand is when you do need help, before you are in a full-blown crisis mode, why don't we ask for just a little bit? Why don't we just ask for a little bit of support? Like, I'm really, I'm really curious about this. Like, where this comes from. And, and, you know, as I look at my own life, I'm like, I don't always ask for help. And I'm like, yes, I do. (laughs) Yes, I totally do. I'm thinking, no, do I? Yeah, I do. As an entrepreneur, I am always like moving, shaking, creating, right? And I have new things that are coming out that I'm trying to get to the point of launch. And I feel a little bit in this pressure mode to get this done and get it created. Well, I don't know if you create things, if you're an entrepreneur or anything, but you can't create from that place of pressure. So I always have to try to come back and not have that on me. And what I would actually like to do, and I think my schedule is going to allow it this year, is that I work in the middle of the night. Because when I have the ceiling on top of me, it creates this pressure. So as I am like around going, I'm asking for help, a change in the schedule, I want people to work with, I want a team of people, I want um, to bounce ideas off of, you know, other entrepreneurs or people who are in energy work or, or whatever, or technological uh, um, experts, <laughs> because I'm not always, but I like to be able to like collaborate with ideas. I really, that really feels amazing to me. So I'm like, I ask for help all the time. So I'm sure I don't. I'm sure I'm missing something and to some degree that I, I pretend I ask for help. But let's talk about you, okay? I don't, let's talk about you for a second. When it comes to you and your life, do you ask for help? Do you, and do you allow others to help you? Now there's a difference. So, but it is in this asking for help. So here's, you've heard me talk about uh, the vibrational scale from like a real simple scale from like zero to 10. Zero is you are absolutely in crisis mode. You're about to end it all. And you are hysterical sometimes, feel like you're going crazy, really feel like you're about to do something stupid, okay? And a 10 is complete alignment. So my question, not my question. Oh yeah, my question. Sorry, I just like pushed record. (laughs) But my question is, why do we wait till we get all the way to zero before we ask for help? Instead of, instead of, instead of waiting 
or, or asking for help when we're at five, right, on that vibrational scale. There have been women that I um, that were in my coaching program that would go through part of the program, get to be a seven, eight, nine, or ten, and then all of a sudden I wouldn't hear from them, and they would disappear until they were a zero again, and then they would show back up. I'm like, okay, wait, this is not going to, this isn't how I, this isn't going to work, right? And I didn't always want them to come back and be like, okay, I'm at a zero again. I said, okay, have you been using the tools on a regular basis? So think about a hot air balloon. This is, oh, what another great person, a great, um, uh, a great analogy, a hot air balloon. If you've seen a hot air balloon, if you know anything about them, they float and float and float and float and float, right? They fill, they use the, they use helium or whatever gas mixture. And when they fill up the balloon, the balloon starts floating. Okay. And then they sort of just kind of let the world toss them around. And then when they don't want to float anymore, they stop putting the, the, the gas into the balloon and they starts to come back down naturally. Right. Well, sometimes life is like that. We're like a hot air balloon. And if we want that beautiful perspective, we have to keep putting in the gas. We have to keep putting in the, the, the work. We have to keep, keep the stuff in front of us, keep the tools in front of us, our words, our thoughts, our activities, our actions, the things that we're doing, a regular meditation practice, your mala beads, um, the words that you're using. I told you uh, a couple of podcasts ago, Amy and I would, we would say this to each other all the time. She goes from the other room or something, she'd yell, she goes, you know what I really hate? And I'm like, well, that's a great way to start a sentence. (laughs) And we'd laugh about it. So she might construct the sentence a little bit differently, but that's not the words you want to throw out on your sidewalk, right? You don't want to throw out the the sidewalk. You know what I hate? That's a terrible way to start a sentence because you're communicating to the universe what you hate. But I'll tell you what, when you're living day to day to day to life, with your kids, your work, your schedule, your husband, your stuff, your groceries, your your coworkers, all the stuff, you tend to lose that focus and you tend to be the hot air balloon that is just bouncing around out in the sky and eventually is going to come back down. And as the hot air balloon comes back down, that's you coming down on the vibrational scale. And then you get all the way to zero and then you call me. <laughs> what I would like to see you do is continue to do the practice. So when we get to a five, that's when you ask for help. You know, I'm starting to feel a little bit overwhelmed. I'm going to, I'm going to reach out to somebody. So here's an example. I just did this yesterday. And it was, it was such an amazing experience. I was, well, this part isn't. I was spiraling down quickly. I, overwhelm is something that I, that I tend to really get caught up in. And uh, I've been working on this new five-day challenge that's going in my Chakras for Beginners group where we're going to work on releasing stuck energy throughout the week. And it's just this mini course. It's free. It's in the Chakras for Beginners Facebook group. Um, You can check it out, look it up. Uh, We're going to be doing that. And uh, it's amazing. It's an amazing course. And it really shows people what I do, the work of energy, and how to start working with your emotions and what the tools are that you need to be able to do that. And uh, I was getting thoroughly overwhelmed. And when I get to that point, like I came in at like an eight and all of a sudden I'm like a five, right? Quickly. And I start getting upset and I start going from overwhelmed to frustrated and then I take it personal and I'm dogging on myself. And what's happening is my mind is creating resistance to get me to stop working on the thing. So I need to provide a tool for myself right there, but that's not the point of this podcast. But anyway, so... I sat down. Well, first I went outside. I did a few things. Like I did a few tools to try to get my numbers back up. I went outside. Uh, It was very warm here yesterday. The grass is really soft. I went outside barefoot and I was walking around in the grass and moving my body and, and doing some big, like gross motor stuff. You know, as I'm sitting at the computer all day, it's like killing my body. So anyway, so I go outside and I'm doing some big activities and trying to like engage and, um, contract my muscles, like large muscle groups, lunges, and did some bear crawls and some plank. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but I'm just trying to get grounded. And large gross motor movement is a great way to do that. And so I come back in and it didn't work. I come back in and as soon as I sit down at the computer, boom, I'm faced with overwhelm again. And I'm like, crap, well now what? So I lit some incense and that helped until I opened the computer. So I'm like, man, my brain has like got me like in a headlock right now, right? So I'm like, I don't know what to do. So 
now I get to this place and I'm like, I wonder if I should reach out to this community that I'm part of this business um, coaching program that I'm a part of, that I paid a lot of money to be a part of. So I'm like, I'm just going to make a post and I'm just going to see if anybody else out there, we're all entrepreneurs. I'm going to see if anybody else out there is as overwhelmed as I am. And so I'm like, Hey, I don't know if you're feeling this way, but I'm really overly overwhelmed. And I'm just like, not feeling very good about this whole thing. And I'm really trying to bust through it, but I'm really having a hard time. Okay. And these two women made comments on the post and then they also sent me a direct Facebook message. So now I'm having this conversation with these two women that are like, we totally know what you're talking about. We've been there. Maybe we're sort of currently there, but listen, we saw you, we know what you're doing. Keep going. And my numbers went, I was like probably a three by the time I was talking to them. Like I could not get back to work. I had to get through this resistance somehow. And by the time I was talking to them, I went from like a three to a five to a seven. And I'm like, this is amazing. This is what I did. I was feeling this emotion. I felt myself starting to spiral and I reached out to my community. I reached out to a safe place and got some ideas. I got some support. Like I didn't necessarily need anybody's advice and I don't, my community that I build, we don't do that. I teach you over here through my podcast or my courses or my coaching program or whatever. But when it comes to coaching and it comes to, to giving you the value of working through your emotions, I don't give you advice because I don't really know where you are in your spiritual journey. I don't know what you know. I don't know what experiences you've had. I don't know what your, all your beliefs are about things. I don't want to give you the Chicago map when you're lost in Detroit. Does that sort of make sense? When you are on your journey, I will give you the tools that you can use and you pick up the tools that work the best for you, period. But I'm not going to give you advice. I had a friend come to me. Um, this was this was several years ago now. She came to me and she was in a relationship, a really, really challenging relationship. And she just kept saying, Jen, what do I do? And I said, I'm not telling you what to do. I said, I can't because it is not my job to direct you or command you to do something and then you do it. That's not my job. My job is to provide a safe environment for you to figure out the best course of action for you, to help you tap into your intuition. So that's what I did. Now, the friend part of me was like, yes, leave that fracking relationship. It is absolutely no good for you. You have been down this road several years. It's not working. It's not going to work. He's not going to change. Get the frack out of there. But here's what would have happened if, if I would have said that, if I would have said that and she would have done it, what I was doing is I was crippling her learning experience of her actually learning the lesson. And it is in the lesson and learning the lesson that we grow. So I learned a long time ago, especially in relationships, that every relationship you get in, you learn something new. And then in the next relationship, you apply those things that you learned. And the relationships get better and better and better. The problem is sometimes we stay in those shitty relationships for way too long. As you've already heard about my four-year relationship that should have lasted about a weekend. All the signs were there. All the signs were there. The huge red flag was waving in my face the whole entire time. The very, very beginning, the flag was in front of my face and I ignored it. And for four years, I was mentally, emotionally stuck in that relationship. And it absolutely destroyed me for it, like took me from this level of confidence to the freaking ground and I had to rebuild myself. I don't recommend that, but we're all here to learn lessons and I'm not going to take your lesson away from you, but I will provide you with tools to help accelerate it. So you're not there for 20 years, then maybe you're only there for a very, very short period of time. You learn the lesson, you apply the tools, boom, you are learning, growing, shifting, changing, and you're doing it because you're a part of a community. That's what I'm providing. And in doing so, we have to get to that part in our life where we understand that it's okay to ask for help. Because I really don't know where or why we learned that. I'm sure that somewhere along the line, we asked somebody for help and we were treated poorly. Someone's like, oh my God, that's no big deal. What are you doing? Or talk to us like we were stupid and demoralized us in some way. But what they weren't creating was a safe environment for us to express, for us to complain, for us to vent about what was going on in our life. And then they didn't hold that space, hold that safe space for you 
to figure out what was right for you. I remember during that relationship, I would call my mom and somewhat complain about it. And she would say, I don't know why you just don't leave. Well, the full sentence is, I don't know why you didn't, won't just leave and go find some young Christian boy to marry. I'm like, mom. <laughs> so I got tired of hearing her advice. So I stopped talking to her. I would tell my friends and they would change the subject. I would talk to my brother and he would just compete with me about how shitty his relationship was. So I never found that safe space. I never found that safe space until way later in life. And I realized when I went in 2013, when I went to my women's retreat and I learned about holding space, I learned about not giving advice. I learned about how to tap into my own intuition to best find my own path and light up my own path. And when I went to that retreat, when I got, when I got home, I was on cloud nine that I felt completely in alignment with who I've been inside and the clouds have separated. And I just couldn't ever get away from that fire. Now the fire was always inside. I could always feel it. I was always connected to it. But then all of a sudden, when I went to this retreat and I understood this is what I'm meant to do. I am meant to put, I am meant to put um, communities of women together to hold space for one another, to stop one-upping each other. Have you ever done that where you're, you're, you're talking with your friends about, like, if, let's say your job, and you start talking about your job, and then they start talking about their job. And in the meantime, you have these two parallel conversations, each talking about their own topic. Nobody's listening to each other. Nobody's supporting one another and you're not able to get, you leave and all you've done is complained. So you feel frustrated. You feel maybe worn out. You feel tired. You feel like you didn't connect with your friend at all because all you did was complain about your job and you get to the end of the day and you're like, what did I just do? Like I'm still in the same spot, right? I did all this venting at dinner, but I'm still in the same spot. Well, I don't know about you but I really like moving through those tough spots. I don't like being stuck in those difficult positions that drive me crazy for long periods of time. I want to move through it as quick as possible. I am a problem solver. And so I get to this place of overwhelm and I'm like, how do I got to get through this? What do I got to do? How do I have to set myself up for success? Maybe working during the day is not a good idea for me. Maybe I need to come downstairs in my office and work when everybody's sleeping. There's no ceiling on the day. I bet I could get way more product, um, way more things done in a two hour period of time than I ever could busting it through during the day with that ceiling and that pressure. So I suggest setting yourself up for success that way. The other thing I'm going to suggest is checking out our community because in knowing, think about, think about when you are struggling with something really difficult, where do you go? Who's your, who's your normal go-to person? And what do they provide to you during that time of struggle? Like, what do they really support you with? And then in that type, whatever type of support that they offer you, does it help you to overcome that problem? Does it help you to bust through it? Does it, do they, do they offer you enough support that at the end of the day you leave and you're at a higher number than when you, when you got there or when you first started talking about it? You all have an intuition. We all do. It's all our connection. It's, it's our guidance system. It's like our, our um, lighthouse. It's, we're moving towards the light. It's, but when we cloud that with all this mental energy, that's when things start getting more and more challenging for us. We start, we start clouding our, we start putting the clouds over top of the lighthouse. Now we can't see where to go. And now we just bang it around in the dark and we cause more trouble for ourselves, don't we? So I'm just going to ask you first to think about, do you ask for help before you're in a crisis place? And if you don't, why? Just journal that. Just think about that. And then the other is, how would your life advance if you were a part of a community that completely wholeheartedly supported you, accepted you, and allowed you to show up as you are? How would your life advance? Because I'm telling you, my life just moved at lightning speed when I reached out in this community. I literally just made a post. I didn't say, hey, can somebody help me? I just made a post. 
And these two girls will be forever in, in, I will be forever in their debt because of what they did. And they helped to shift my energy from spiraling down into this place of, of happiness. And so would my community help you? Would, would being a part of a sister community help you if you could literally walk in and be yourself? However that meant for you to show up and for you to say, you know what, listen, I want to be something. I want to advance through this problem. I want to show up on the other side and have my numbers be better and, and greater. And I want to feel better and I want to be happy and I want to make more money or be a better parent or a better wife or a better whatever woman. And think about what would be on the other side of that. And let me know. If you're not already a part of our Lady Rising group, it's on Facebook. We have our sister calls um, twice or three times a month. It's like every other week. It just depends on how many weeks are in the month. And they're $15 a call or $25 a month at a subscription. Well, I'll tell you what. I would have gladly, if I would have known what these girls were going to do, I would have gladly paid each of them $15 to help me get out of that hole that I was in. That to me was worth it. I paid a whole hell of a lot more money than $15 to be a part of this group. And that was a huge breakthrough for me. And that's what I'm offering you. No matter if you're dealing with relationships, health, spirituality, a disconnect, you feel anxious, depressed, grief, sadness, anger, it doesn't matter. We are here to help you. We're here to support you. We're building communities of women that are going somewhere in their lives. And I want you to trust in us that we can support you and we can hold space for you to show up for you. Now I ask, before you're in crisis, Will you ask for help? If you liked this episode and you look forward to future episodes and are really looking for a community to help support you with implementing the tools that we're talking about in this podcast, please consider joining our online sister community called Lady Rising on Facebook, where we focus on that spiritual support and connection, just like in today's episode. I hope you'll join us. Go to Facebook, type in Lady Rising, and tell me you came in through the podcast.